So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Looks like we will um, table the recreation facilities grant application for trail work. So yeah, we'll because do that this Dr. Time. Hinman has the opportunity to write a bigger grant, which we think will, will do better. So D-Tree is gonna write this one, but we're gonna write it for the swing sets because we took the swing sets down to the skate park and there's all the pipe it needs to be replaced, the chain, um, you know, we gotta put uh, the, the chips underneath that are expensive and we're also at the same time gonna move the monkey bars, for, for lack of a better, to move, relocate that along the moving So she's getting pricing now, so we're gonna, we so, so is that all that grant can be used for? <laughs> yeah, it can be used for rec. Right. There's three different, there's three things that it can be used for. I think one was historic preservation, one was rec facilities, one was for, like, a, um, something that didn't apply to us. I can't remember what now, but it was. Salt shed? No. This isn't the salt shed money, nor is it, and this also can't be used to build this new town garage. So um, we figured we'd write it for the facility because it's going to be, you know, we've got a, all the pipe. We have to purchase from Capital Steel all the piping for that part of it, the legs, for the um, swing set, all the chains, new swings. And because of the fall zone, you have to dig out and have X amount of feet of chips. Yeah. So we're doing it for that and to relocate the monkey bars. Could you use that for any of the pool house uh, repairs that have to be done with the floor we were talking about, the new subfloor and the possible drain system? And all well, that we haven't tested the drain system yet, so we'll see. Right, right. Um, and I don't know about the flooring, so I'll have to ask her to read the fine print. And I'm not sure, it's, I think my guess would be we would have to put it they may not want to do repairs and upgrades. I'm not sure. sure. Yeah. We'll have to see. I'll have her. I'll ask her to turn around and she agree because she didn't start on it. So we'll see. And we haven't tested the. Gabriel needs to run a hose in there and test it. And she called the Randolph Horn Company, but they didn't answer or called her back. So we're gonna look and bury it a couple of places. So I don't know. I'll ask her. Maybe we can throw it all in one. But although if the grant period runs over, we won't we'll lose our opportunity. Anything else to change on that one? Or add? Okay. I think we're good. I move we uh, put the agenda as many. Second. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Public comment inquiry. I see Doug made it out tonight. Must have something. No? Public comment? And it's not on the agenda this evening? Nothing? Okay. Moving on, highway access policy. We had gone through this the last meeting. Well, Dave Eddy called me today and he has a comment on question. Section 9, it says, in the event that damage to a town highway is caused, um, Basically, would be enforced the owner to compensate the town. He wants to know what happens if the town dumps water on private property and, and does damage. But we do dump water on private property, as you know. When we're coming down like a camp out, at some point you've got to get the water off the road. Obviously, we try never to dump it in somebody's dooryard, but backfield. That's why in camp out we had to carry water so far. I guess apparently he had a someone once upon a time did something near his road, and every time the culvert didn't work, it washed out his parents' driveway. Yeah. And then he had to go fix his parents' driveway, and he said it was due to some negligence of the town. No, he didn't have a big culvert. Oh, and I told him he should have come to the town and yeah. asked for a recourse. So I told him I would bring up his concern, but I said, we, we have to dump water on the private property. Obviously, we didn't do it purposely to take out somebody's driveway, but I did know yeah. mitigating circumstances, and the connection wasn't super great between him and I, because he's out of state, so. Mm -hmm. So it was just, they didn't, he didn't clean his own culvert. Right. Oh. Well, there you go. But I, 
I would think that if we installed whatever it is, any type of drainage mechanism or something else, if it damaged the property owner in some way, that we would we'd be, have to be responsible. We'd be liable somehow to fix that. Yeah, we have an example of that currently. Two we things. would only maintain the very end of the, this woman said she'd cap our culprits, so I don't think so. And, uh, so we will maintain our right of way, but the water, you know, historically, she has, I said, if you're going to build a house there, you're, you will do some site prep, and your contract you will adjust your own way. We already had, we'd already taken this water and installed the culvert up above to kind of reduce the water flow, but no, if the water has got to go. And the people above her should have been maintained. I guess, I guess I meant inside the town right away. Inside so. the town right away, yeah, but outside. Now, the town. usually, if you go outside the town right away, you get the okay from the the owner, and then it's kind of once it's put into place, it's kind of an as is thing yes, at that yes, point. Yeah. But I was saying, if we went and did something in the right away, yeah, put in a culvert of some sort right. and. Yeah. It wasn't installed correctly and washed out someone's driveway, then we would be responsible for that. If it was something that we did inside the right. Yeah. But I don't think it needs to be put into the policy. But, but uh, Eric Richardson has mentioned that to me a couple of times that and yeah, it used to run off down into the river and now it's not. And it's it's degraded the end of the approach of that bridge on that side. Uh, well, so that's well something I think our really culvert can come way back. I mean, there's the bridge, a house up the road, and then it splits. So where this culvert is, that culvert is dumping out into what's a little, you know, kind of a stream which is going to the river. So we're not, that's not here. I'm probably just, there. I'm sure there's scour, because there's scour on, you know, just about every bridge in Vermont. So it could be something else, but I have, we'll have to take technology. Well, there's some, there's some pretty deep holes in the Oh, I have no doubt. Summer. I'm sure there is. Uh, also. Yeah, I'm sure there is. So anyways, that was Dave's. I told him I would bring it up, and I explained to him my comment about it, but I told him I'd bring it up. Was there any other comments in regards to it? So we changed the fee. We talked about the fee last time. Yep. So um, down at the bottom, yeah, we reprinted, obviously, uh, the state changed the reporting fee to $15. Yeah. So you can see where I hand wrote it in. Yeah. So I'll have to we'll fix that, of course. But, um, but the fee is $125? Well, when we get to the fee schedule, I, I have not put the fee on here okay. specifically because um, that way it just leaves it blank if you can handwrite it. In case you don't have to change it more every time you guys raise the prices. Yeah. With it. So we have a motion motion to adopt the highway access policy. Move. Second. All in favor? Uh, <laughs> gotcha, Mom. Uh, I said I got you. I was just seeing if you were gonna fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we'll pass this one around. You go sign it. Make it easy. Just three of us on it.
list is the fee schedules. chance to look how does that hundred and twenty five dollars compared to towns in the area I don't know when it comes to that. I don't care. I didn't have a chance to honestly, locate it but I don't know because honestly even if they're still doing what we are charging thirty they're losing money. I mean by the time I pay Alan and myself and or to go out there two or three times I'm first we charge more than this. Mm -hmm. We charge two twenty five. But I thought it's a big jump from 30 to 125. But if they're putting in a curb cut, they're probably yeah. building something, so yeah. it's part of the gig. Yeah. So we got ourselves covered for two or three trips out there. Yeah, so that yeah. was kind of it. I mean, two at least. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's on exactly. No, I don't, I don't think, think so either. So. I'm just wondering. On, yeah. um, and then obviously removing the by nobody really deserves it anymore. Uh, then I asked D Tree about the pool, so you can see she has um, what she said, keeping the same. And changed a couple things. And then I removed the water rates only because it's all set in ordinance. I don't think we need it up there. So we'll go, can we go back to the band shell? Yeah. So, the band shell, yeah. Um, so the electrical hookup, <coughs> excuse me, 25 bucks. Reservation and use. So if you've got a, a six piece you know, band in there using a bunch of power, is there, is that going to cover? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know what the, I would think it would, but I don't know. And no one, honestly, nobody, the only one who uses it is the concert series, and right. we don't charge them anything. Oh, okay. um, I did have someone request to use it the other day, so I told them they weren't going to be using electrical because it was just acoustic, so I said, you know, it'd be nice if you paid the, you know, the $25, but they didn't care if other people were there. So it says, be guaranteed there's no other user. I actually think that it would be almost impossible for us to, because it's public property. So all I said was, if you want to use it for your acoustic situation, that's fine. I would love for you to make a $25 donation. Sure. So I think we should, I don't you know, I mean, Kelly has done this before down at Peabine, and she said, you put up signs that say, um, Reserve, which is like, you know, it's on a Saturday. We're not going down there. And, you know, I can't, we can't force people off. Right. I mean, it's totally good, but it's public property. So, um, so I don't know, Paul, if 25 covers it, maybe it should be more, but I, I've never, I've never rented it. I've asked if anyone's ever, nobody I mean, seen very rarely you might see a wedding that thing there. Yeah. But not so I'm not sure. I mean, it seems like 25 would cover yeah. a couple hours, but maybe not. You could up it to 35 or 50. No, I, I, I don't know. I'm just curious a little bit. I don't know. We use it. You know, we just turned on the spring and power's on. But we shut off. But I'm certainly open to you raising it. Um, but the guarantee of other, no other use, I think we should. We, should, we can remove <coughs> that and just ask for it. I mean, I was almost just thinking that whole piece that we just removed the fees out of it. Yeah. Maybe. For the band I mean, I'm just thinking, like, yeah, I mean, other than the concert series, I mean, who else does use the band show yeah. to plug anything? And maybe once in a blue moon something that might uh, be the or, school or, or something. School, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, nothing. Not, really. <laughs> not to mention, then you got to kind of police it and try to figure it out. And yeah. 
I would, I'm just thinking maybe just take the fees right off those. Maybe what we could do is just ask people. And Van shall just be by yeah. reservation only. And we say, you know, it'd be great if you can make a donation. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's the way I would do it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, we want to promote as much use for that building as possible. And, and we already tell them to take trash in and trash out, so. Yeah. Definitely, definitely reservation, though. I mean, yeah, okay. Well, that's fine me. I think. I mean, I know there'll be some times where someone might just use it, but. Well, just like the town hall, for the most part, we let rivers meet here, state agencies meet here. We don't charge them. I mean... Well, I think the only reason why I'm thinking reservation right now anyway is just with the whole COVID thing. Like, if all of a sudden somebody wanted to have a a concert there that's not part of the concert yeah. series, then they were going to have, I don't know, let's say it's a good band, 150 people turn out. You know, I mean, how would we yeah. sort of police the policy and procedures of people no, being right. so distancing just, and yeah, stuff? We just take it off. It's a good... Or, you know, yeah. or... Or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, a rally of some sort or whatever, yeah. just so that you have some. Well, I know um, I talked to Jesse the other day from Babes, and they might be doing, maybe they're looking at some other locations, but might be doing um, having some acoustic violinists um, play there. Um, and he said there's no march, no this or that, it's just some acoustic violinists. And I said, there's no bathrooms, certainly can use it, because you know the rules, no smoking, no this, all that. And I said, you know what, a donation of 25 bucks would be nice. And he said, they wouldn't be amplifying music. And I said, obviously, COVID, you should follow those rules and don't you know, make people aware of masks and social distancing. And, but I don't know, that was the only person I've ever had to call, call me about it. I didn't, I didn't see anything else in there. I mean, we, yeah. we picked this one apart quite a bit last year just because yeah. our fee structure was um, didn't match our cost structure in the town. The only so. other one on here that was on the top of page two is private pool rental. This has been a thing. And uh, so uh, I think last year they were Greg let people rent it for like 25 or 50 bucks and then they had to pay the lifeguards directly. And I was like, absolutely not. Those, they're that's our liability insurance and our workers' comp and all that. So I said to Dietrich, way I said you can build them to use the pool and maybe that gives them X amount of lifeguards and over that they're gonna have to pay so much more, of we have to pay those gotcha. young people and I said whoever rents the pool needs to have proof of insurance mm -hmm. um, so I said they can go through the tulip program and they can put it on their homeowners but 25 bucks to rent the entire pool mm -hmm. plus pay some kids I'm like if something goes wrong, mm -hmm. someone in that family, a guest of that party, is going mm -hmm. to sue us. I said, absolutely not. So she came up with these numbers, which she looked at local pools that also do this. I thought that was totally fair. You want to rent the entire pool? I think 175 bucks is a pretty good gig, considering electricity, pouring, and all that. Well, what's the, is there a time limit? Rent it for four she, hours or two hours? Yes, there is going to be a, a, I think it's four, and she's coming up with a policy on but I think it's good. She said, after all, there's a bunch of kids. You can have X amount of people per lifeguard. And she said, it's tiring to got kids, you know, running, jumping, whatever, and it's tiring. So I think it was four hours, Paul. But yes, she's coming up with a policy on it. Um, but I haven't put it in now since we were, you guys are approving the fee schedule. Then obviously, you know, we're closed. Well, she'll have it done before they open. And she also had, uh, I think you guys might know that, the family passes, they finally put a cap on that. There are people buying a family pass for $80 and putting every possible relative on it. That's, you know, finally said, it's, it's you, it's your, it's the mom, dad, and like four kids, and then after that, it's X amount of person. So, because people were buying them and putting grandmothers on, it's on, you know, oh. yeah. so, so we finally, she worked that kink out too. <laughs> People are funny. So, I don't know if you have anything you guys want to increase or change or other than the suggestions we make, I don't know. Anything I've got is, uh, I've been asking for this for quite a while, is 
people that are saying to get a zoning permit, it should be something, but we're going to put that into the, the We have to put it in the bylaws. Right. In the yeah. Plan, the plan I plan. agree. Some I think sort of penalty or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it should be, well, whatever the state, I, I will double check the state statute, but I think it should be like three, four times whatever yeah, but it, the permit fee. But it should be somewhere, and if it's going to be in the town plan, I'll agree with it. It won't be in the town plan. Yeah, it'll, it'll be in the bylaws. Bylaw. 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 Okay. I agree. Can't be, otherwise it's all well, you know. Yeah, it's just a slap on there. It is, and the other thing too is if you really want to get heavy duty with them, then it's like a, <laughs> a you know, notice of violation, and it's more, you know, it would be nice to be able to just say, okay, send them a letter, here's your situation, when you come in, your permit fee was X, now the penalty is Y, so. I think on the state statute, you can only find them $100 or something. I know. It's not I, much we must have broke that. I feel like we just charged them three times or four exactly. times. Exactly. But you might, yeah, but you, you, you can get by with that with the, the fee. It should be something. It should be bigger than 100 bucks. Yeah. Because now someone has had to find it. Someone's had to sit down and write you a letter, research the whole thing. And probably go look at it. Probably go look at yeah. it. Yeah. So by the time 100 bucks, just yeah. some cold like it. Doesn't even cover nothing. No, I agree. I agree, Mom. I told you to make it needs to be. Not to mention the endless calls to get the money. and. Yeah, exactly. The only other one I was going to ask for, but now with Oscar <clears throat> only working part time, yeah. like we probably should have some sort of fee, because he did some. Like if we, if our constable goes and does some, let's say gets uh, rented out for four hours to patrol uh, a bike bike race or something like that, we should have some sort of yeah. fee in place. Because right now it's kind of loosey goosey do, of, it, yeah, you know, we'll charge them a detail rate. Right. So we could add that. That's seventy five dollars an hour or whatever so, or eighty or whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean the going price for uniform traffic officers like construction wise are, you know, about eighty bucks an hour once you figure in yeah. blue lights and person and gas and travel and all that stuff. Yeah. But I, well we could put that in a detail rate for constable. <clears throat> I mean you could charge them out at forty five or fifty bucks an hour, I mean, for sure. But we do like if he's done a bike race or something, we because he did have a couple of things that he did and there. They charged him a detail rate. A few months ago, and I can't remember what they were now, but it was some. He did some stuff with the bike. He did something with some some uh, yeah. construction Wasn't something it? one day. Yeah, and and I don't um, know what that was, but and he does. Um, we have he's charged out a detail rate, but if you want to set a detail rate, you certainly can make it like. Well, like, I mean, Windsor County sheriffs, for instance, are, they're like $60, $65 an hour. But that doesn't include, they get travel from portal to portal plus, yeah. plus mileage. And when you factor that out, that's like 80 bucks an hour. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I, I so I mean, if you did that. Well, I just, I was just thinking, I had, I I had it written on here because we had talked about it. I'm just going to tell you right now. Because so. he did something with a bike race or something, and then he did something with, um, someone was doing some work that needed uh, a couple hours of Yeah, well, he did something detail. for me, and I did lunch or anything. So, and I can't remember what that other one was. Yeah, so oh. I think that just easy times. just to have a rate. he said 35%. Not, not to mention the other thing is, is if we do, and you know, VTrans has done pretty much all the roads in Bethel here for the next 12 years, but when that comes back around again, it's nice to have your own constable do some of the work because that's, and that's he, good revenue. It right? is, and he's offered. So, I mean, honestly, anything over 30 bucks an hour would be gravy. So, yeah. if you want to set it for 45 plus mileage, that's a, that'd be fine. Or whatever you want. Yeah. 
something. Yeah, I mean, I just think we should have something. And we may only use it once in a while, but at least you don't have to sit there and negotiate. Exactly. Yeah. No, we usually just, we just gave them, right? We built them in the cake. So if you want 45 bucks an hour, anything over 30 is going to be great. Well, like I was saying, the going, you know, if you call up Windsor, Windsor County, they're 65 an hour just to start. Oh. And, you know, Orange County is probably somewhat similar. So you know. Well, usually it'd, it'd just be anything in Vermont. I mean, it would be only in Bethel, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, 55? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Totally. That's good. I'll write it in there. Yeah, and, it, and we'll just start hiring you out, Therese, on the weekend. Me? Yeah, you just get us sitting there with blue lights going. Yeah. Uh, Teresa will be down there for fun. Most thinking over there, we don't spin. Most like, once the town keeps their 30, you're yeah. like 25 bucks. Yeah, just go and All take right. a nap, keep the blue lights on. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Collect, collect the easy money. That's right. Okay. I think that's a great idea. Any, awesome. any other changes to the fee schedules? Or are we good to. Um, we have these. Bills here for dealing with dogs and cats and whatnot. They're all in your ordinance. Okay. Yeah. They're all so they don't need to be on this list. Nah, I don't have them on here. Okay. I can look at them. No, no. That's why I was taking out the water stuff because we already it's all in the ordinance. Anything that's in the ordinance to strip it out of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just another place to remember. I think you only put it on there last year just just so that because we had so so many of our fee structures that were yeah. messed up. You know, incomplete and uh, that uh, we were just kind of looking at everything but so I'd entertain a motion to set the fee schedules for the does this run until July 1st or yeah, yeah. so I guess it's, so, uh, okay. so it'd, be, it'd be July 1 of 2020 through June 30th of 2021 yeah. Okay. Second. I'll see. <coughs> Political campaign. What's that? I don't need to. Yeah. They, they, okay. We got a motion in a second. We're good. I didn't hear it all. Yay! I was like, all right, right. Mm -hmm. Listen, I got kids to make me think about this. So I don't need to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear that? And we had uh, political campaign signs we talked about last time under other communications, and, yeah, we, and we discussed about, about being, putting together a policy for that. Yeah, we talked about it being, you know, short and sweet, but obviously it's never that easy. Once you read, once I read the insert that I was reading from you guys and the Secretary of State, this is taken right off from their website. Yep. Um, I did try to find a couple things, and then I will tell you this. Oh yes, Dave, I think I've changed. Let me find it. Printed out two copies. He wanted it to say, and I printed out a second copy in case you approve the change, on regulations, the second bullet down, it says shop signs should be removed immediately after the election. He wants it to say signs shall be removed immediately after the election, which made sense to me. Um, I was just copying somebody else's wording, so that was David's change. Or should we put something on there like a time period rather than I mean immediately to me is you know it's over within a day you know right well immediately to somebody else could be the next week you know I think it's uh, could you say within a five day well, period town, or something it says or? right here on town highways may be displayed for a period of not more than two weeks um, but doesn't say how oh, long they have to take their sign down there. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the election. I mean, we give them a day or two. And sign shall be removed um, immediately after the election. Within and it does say, um, but yeah, if the town government gives itself a political campaign sign, it will be held at the town meeting for 10 days. So, um. Is this a policy, an ordinance? It's a policy. It's just a policy. Yeah, the, the Secretary of State encourages towns to make them. Um, um, obviously, we're not going to be in effect for tomorrow's election, but certainly for November. Because right now, if we don't have a policy, it says that it, as long as they, well, it, they're they supposed call. to get permission. So as long as they call and say that they're going to put a sign on town or state right away, then it falls under the state statute. Um, 
but we have areas of you know all the signs have been popping up and they might be in our you know our, um, our green areas you know where flowers you know those have been popping up so what could we do for the local end of things um, but I guess I guess the good thing is this, Chris, is even if we maybe get them the next day, we do say that the, we're going to hold them at the town office for 10 days. Mm -hmm. So even if we pick them up the next day, they have, you know, we're going to hang on to them for 10 days. So, um, I mean, I guess the, the, that's up to you. The way I'm looking at it is either, is either we tell people that they can't put them within town right of ways or on town property, or we tell them that they can put them on town right away but what do we have for enforcement for them to actually come get the sign because you know Just the cost I can guarantee you that they're not coming back to get those signs they're, those things have been paid paid for and they're never coming back I mean do we hold them do we hold them accountable and say you know we're gonna allow you to put them on our land or in our right away however you have X amount of days to remove these or we will charge you I don't know, just ten dollars a sign or something to go pick them up. I don't know if we can. I mean, I've read the statute. They didn't say that the state's charging them. This just says they only have two weeks, um, and that's town highways because that's exempt from the state sign law. If you look at number two, obviously that says no political campaign signs would be allowed on public or town-owned property. I'm not sure we can find them any number because there was nothing in state statute about the state finding them. It just said the state just, I basically right. took a lot of this from them saying that because they're, this is theirs, because they're exempt from the state sign law, this is what they do. I think the cost of generating those signs is enough that people want them back, and that may be enough for you to. But not if they want to lose. Well, that. yeah. But a lot of, you know, but the thing yeah. is, we're picking I guess them up. So. <laughs> if they put them on, like, say we had this ordinance, right now we would already pull signs that we'd be holding, and those people do come and get them. Because we used to do that. Right, during the election. Yeah. Right. But like yeah. after the election, if it's, no. you know, if we're sitting here. I don't know. I copy this is exactly. You know, Wednesday, let's say, say, and they lose and, you know, I mean, what's, what's, what's to get them motivated to go pick up their signs? So then you, know? you could just say signs shall be removed within X amount of There is no, I don't think we. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think we can do anything like, about it, Chris, honestly, I because I copied this directly from the state statute. And I know, and the state didn't charge them anything. And I know in the past, I wouldn't say that we've had a campaign sign major issue in town, but I was, it was funny that we were talking about this because I did see news, it was in New Hampshire, of a town over there, now I can't remember the one, but it had like, like it's like a, a all day fight of like, they have just, it's like a battle of, Ground town in New Hampshire that they have like, like you know where like they'll put a sign and then they see that person's sign so they put a sign next to that one oh, and pretty soon there's like thousands of signs all in one row. I've seen that in Gene. Yeah, they, I can't remember what town it was, but they were talking about that they had a policy of no campaign signs because they were spending so much time picking those things up to just pick them up again and then eventually to dispose of them and. Yeah, I'm looking up 
yes, there shall remove the sign without notice or further proceeding at the expense of the owner. Uh, the agency of transportation legislative body of this county shall have the authority to remove, relocate, or vote without prior notice any sign device display that is erected within 24.75 feet of the actual center line of any highway. But that's what they're charging for. Mm. So, um, <laughs> if we took minimum wage times thirty percent, we could come up with a base fee. I don't know. How, how do we? I don't don't think think ever money. How would we? Huh? I don't think you'd ever get any money from that. No, like that. God, no. Yeah. So it's just best to pick them up, take them to landfill. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is for all the potential. This is why the state is broke. And I and I don't think the language is completely there. What I was thinking of, but I guess the way I was envisioning it is that there wouldn't be any political signs on any town owned land or common areas, I guess. You know, like obviously the van shell and like well, here, but then you get like, you know, the three way intersections where a flower garden's at and then all of a sudden you see ten of them sitting there and it's like you don't really want them there. But if somebody wants to put a sign on their property that's inside the town right away, that should be fine. You know what and I mean? Like fine. how do we get that? It doesn't seem like this language has well all that because you have a problem. Because your problem is this, we can say no political camp campaign signs can be allowed on public or town-owned property, like the town hall, the clerk's office, the band shell key line. But the state says, because of the state's uh, exempt law, we have to allow campaigns, we, we can say that we have to allow campaign signs within our right away of the town highway. Um, as long as they because ask ahead of time, right? Because, well, as with regulations well, here. So you're looking for two different things. This but it's going to be 24.75 24 feet from the center line, so that's a full land plus into somebody's yard. Well, we're not going to do it on people's you know, private so property. What we're saying is, like, what I'm saying to you is that little triangle up there, we're going to have to allow them because that's with it, that's on the town highway. But we can say no to the town hall, the town office, the, the town garage. We can say no to the properties. I'm just telling you. But if I read it right, statute, so. if someone wanted to put put one on the, we'll call it the Church Street, Pleasant Street, green, uh, the common the green area, if yeah. someone wants to put one there, then we by the state statute, they would have to get permission first. I mean, not permission. They have to let you know that you're going to put one. No, there. we're saying no, they can't put it there. If you look at number two, it says no political campaign signs will be allowed on public town owned property at the top of page two. So what we're saying is, so we're saying they can't, but the town highways, because of the state statute, we have to allow it apparently within the right way. And so I'll tell you what, because this is, I, this is what they're telling us. Um, what's that? So. So the Pleasant Street, well, the Church Street, Pleasant Street one, the one down by the triangle. 107 and 12, yeah, and then the one, there's one kind of a smaller one up by North Road, River Road. So yeah. those three right now would say no. Is that how? I, I just want to make sure I they understand. They would it right. say. Or are they saying some of these are inside the state statute, which allows it if they ask. It says, signs erected and maintained by or within the approval of a town outside the highway. Right away, camera. Hang on a second. I just want to make it easy so if we say, you know, AJ, there's two signs that are sitting down there in the common area, why don't you go pick them up? You know, then he right. can go do it. You know what I mean? Not have to. Because they're. Well, oh, that one's in a certain right. restricted field. Let me find the one that I'll read it to you. Because this was on the thing, I kind of signs to be maintained for not more than two weeks, announcing an auction or a campaign drive or event of a civic, philanthropic, or religious organization. That's what the state's mm -hmm. 10 BSA 949. And I, from the Secretary of State's thing that they had put out, it made it sound like we had to adhere to this. Let me find that. Let me read that to you. It's um, Secretary of State. I had it in my packet. 
they put out this whole thing on science. And then maybe under bullet point two there we may want to put or or otherwise given permission to do so or, because I'm just thinking right now I mean it's not a given that we would have the November elections at the school so let's say something happens and we can't have them at the school and we had to move it here if we pass this ordinance and basically would say that you couldn't have political signs out front of this. No, it, says, it says right now here you can't have political signs. You can't have political signs within a certain number of feet from a polling place. Not, you know what it said? It, it used to once upon a time. People think it says that you can't, you can, the town can say no on on signs. And you can have a policy. Otherwise, you just can't impede the voters. Some people like the signs. So, okay, so here's political candidates, exit polls, person parking the car. All right. The Office of Secretary of Okay, you must obtain agency of transportation. Okay, the agency of transportation enforces Vermont sign law according to these statutes so about where the signs may not be located within state highways, which we talked about. Signs should be removed at immediately after the next one. Signs may not interfere. Signs are located. Town highways, on town highways, temporary campaign signs may be displayed for a period of not more than two weeks within the highway right of way because they are exempt from the state law under 10 PSA. Enforcement on town highways is the responsibility of the legislative body. So when I read this, Chris, that's why I put this in here. Because I knew we didn't want it anywhere, but because it says on town highways, temporary campaign signs may be displayed for a period of not more than two weeks within the highway right of way um, sign law. So I felt because what it says, we had to do this piece under town highways because it's telling right. that's what it says. It says we have to. So I was saying, okay, this is what we'll do on town highways, but on town owned property. property. So you're, what were you saying about this? Oh, we didn't put the school in here because we don't have any say over what the school does. Oh, I was just using the, you know, because Let's, we, let's yes, say something happens and we can't November, use the school. There's a chance in November we may have to use this building. And say you use this building or another town building, then, you know, the way we have it now would say that you couldn't have it here. No, it says we can't have campaign signs on our property. Right. Which is good. You want that. So. You don't want people to have campaign signs here. I guess what I'm still confused on is the, is the common area. I, I'll say the common area is the garden is the... That we have. We so have, is that governed by the state statute or is that governed, would that be no, governed by what I'm we're saying doing? that we're getting governed. I'm putting in here town hall, town clerk's office, van shell, Levine Park, um, any of the town owned properties, we're saying absolutely no political signs and we'll pick them up. But if it's like this little triangle down here on 107, then to me that's going to fall under the town highways right away. That's state highway. I mean, or oh, is that the state, well, well, we the triangle down here under the bridge is us. Because state highway ends. But if someone puts one up on Church Street, Pleasant Street, <laughs> Gardens up here, can we, could we remove about that? The no. no. I'm talking at the end of the, at the, the end of Church Street. Oh, oh so the, the freeway I mean. there. No, I guess that's you know, that's something where if AJ drives by and sees that there's a political sign out there that he can just pull over and pick it up, throw it in the truck and Drive on, or is, we could put, or is that one where? You know what? You know, I'm not really sharing this challenge. So we could, we could add that in here. We could add those. It says etc. So we could say that's all. All um, you pull all those signs. But if you're driving down and mo and um, but on the regular highway where the town owns, I guess we leave them on the side of the road, but we're not going to put them because we do maintain that. 
Well, away. those would all be someone's property, right? I mean, right. So those we don't touch anyway. So I mean, if you, right? I mean, even though it may not be yeah. 24.75 feet away, if you drive up, if you drive up Church Street here, and someone's got it right on the, you know, right on the back side of the sidewalk, and we're yeah. not gonna pull those. We'd so we put those. in Town Hall, Town Clerk's Office, Van Shell, Piedmont Park, etc. And it just gets in a, it's just, you know, it's gonna put you in like it's a mowing pain. It's, it's yeah. every time you gotta do something, yeah. you know, I mean. Yeah, so what we, I mean, any place that we mow, we could pick them up. I mean, that could fall under that. It's, it, yeah. I'm just trying to think whatever's easiest, well, not easiest, but. It would be easier for us to be able to pick them all up, but somebody could come in and say, there's, you know, somebody could be splitting hairs. We could say, I mean, I guess that could go either way. But because we do mow it, you know, Richard mows it, you should just pick them up and toss it. We'll leave it on the porch of the town office. Someone sees it, they come get them. Call them right. We're not going to be jerks about it. <clears throat> you know. Mm -hmm. Like, we picked some up underneath the town Welcome to Bethel sign. Somebody had political signs there. We picked that up. The little sign stands come in handy if you ever want to have, like, a yard sale or something. They're great. Yeah. You know, you just switch it in and put it out there. And I was going to say, well, <laughs> those are good. My husband used yeah. soap for that. Yeah. We, we would use to sell it. They look great yeah. for target practice. But, um, so that's why, Chris, I put them in separately because of the guidance on the Secretary of State's website. So with what we currently have here, other than changing the, sh the should to shall, yeah. does everything else in here but did you want to put a time frame, or we just basically? Did you, I, mean, I mean, does it even matter? Put a time frame if, if the chances are they're not coming back to get them. Yeah. And, and then I guess the road crew, if it's the day after the election, they see them, they can just throw them in the truck. Yeah. Right. Like they're driving by. Yeah. And then you can tell them the they're at the. Primaries would be the big one next year because they're going to have the primaries are again because if somebody wins, they're going to leave the sign up. It's true. They're going to need it for November. You're right. Well, I mean, luckily, Vermont <laughs> isn't really that bad, but you get some areas that really yeah, are really there's, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, after a while, it starts vision of people coming out of the driveways or on the roads. Yeah. So it is, you know, it's a state. I mean, of course, it's, it's going to be complicated. We would have liked a very short sweep policy, which is what they suggested, but then when I read it, I'm like, well, it can't be short and sweet because you're telling us we've got to do X and Y. So we can say, no, we can't put them on our stuff, but if it's in the town highway right away, we basically got to leave it alone. So. <laughs> but yes, if Richard's mowing, I'll tell Richard, you see a sign, your mom, it's in your way, pick it up. Bring it down to town office, somebody will come get it. Okay. But they would also have to know that. You know, if there's one sitting on someone's, you know, sometimes well, it might be out. on the, not touch the back 40 them. somewhere mowing, but uh, it's someone's so property. Well, we don't. I mean, the guy's got the three trunk signs in his front yard, and those are within the town right away. Yeah, but probably. the, yeah, but right. you know what, Richard you know, doesn't. But we would leave those. We don't know that. Richard doesn't yeah. know that. He yeah. mows, you know, the town office. He mows certain things, you know, but, so where he mows, he, he mows pea vine. He mows yeah. over here. He tree works in the flower beds, you know. But if we're doing like roadside mowing, well, you know, I mean, that like. Never happens. <laughs> I never die. Give it up now. But you know what I mean? Like roadside mowing, and you come across a private property that has the. I don't know. I'm assuming know. that the gentleman, I don't know what he does. I'm not asking. They could take it over. The they probably just run them over. You know what? He could take it over the contractor. Okay. Um, but anyway. Paul, Mo, do you guys have anything, anything else in there? Or do you want to move forward with it? I mean, and we didn't. Uh, Dave was all good, other than changing some words around. Did Lindley have any feedback on it? Or? No, she said it all good. Probably she didn't have it. All right, so I make a motion we accept the uh, town Bethel policy regarding the placement of political signs with the one correction. And I made that change. I said to, I told Dave, I said, oh, it looks good, Dave. They might want that. I'll make okay. some copies. Okay. Okay, right. Okay. Eric's good. Yeah. No, Lindley caught it. She said she was happy. 
Well, we had to kind of make it look like we were earning our money tonight. It was a kind of a short night. Well, you're trying to extend it. They used to run into a lot of sign issues yeah. out and about, Doug? Oh, sure. People used to leave yard sale signs out forever. Yard sale, weddings, yeah. campaigns. Yeah, so fall down into the woods, probably. Some people the yard sale the whole summer. Yeah, it's true. Well, you could, that could be a loophole. If you have one every so many days, you could leave the sign up. Further discussion on the campaign signs? Good. Moving on, Energy Committee membership. So I put in a piece of an email exchange that Nicole and I were having um, because she had written to me a while ago, or you know, a couple weeks ago. She has a couple of interested young people, but they do not reside in Bethel. So she asked me about it, and I said, oh, geez. I said, I don't know. Um, I know the planning commission allows non residents, hence why I'm on the planning commission and um, in Bethel. And uh, so then I asked the LCT, and she said, Well, you know, what did the select board make for a motion? So Nicole, God bless her, came up with it and sent it to me. Uh, and um, so it doesn't really. Doesn't you know, say either way. Doesn't right. say either way. So I will say this tomorrow, uh, you know, we're. Printed, uh, printed tax bills today. We're still getting those ready. So tomorrow tax bills are going out. And one of the inserts is a double-sided purple thing drumming up. We need, we need the committee members back because once the town plan gets adopted, I will be the only planning commission member left. So we're hoping. So honestly, if she has two good people that are interested and have a background in, in this, why wouldn't you? We can't, we haven't got Bethel residents, you know, to, to unfortunately, to um, sign up. I guess my only comment, what I said to her was, I don't think that they should make up the majority of the committee. That would be, but that's just my opinion. Um, so, Dave Eddy said he's okay with non-Bethel residents being on the Energy Committee. So, I'm not sure how you guys feel, but. You know just my opinion, uh, if they're on a Bethel committee, it should be just for Bethel, not other areas, you know, that they're trying to push through for on their own agenda. That would be my only thought. I, I don't understand. Okay, if, if somebody from Royalton gets on the Bethel board energy and then all of a sudden it's pushing, I'm just using Royalton as a for reference, but, you know, as long as for the good of Bethel, not. Oh, right, for well, sure. Absolutely, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, all Bethel yeah. committees are, should be for the benefit of Bethel. Right. I agree. Yeah, the only, and like I said, the only thing I could think of is maybe you just don't want, I, I wouldn't think you want the majority of your committees made up of non Bethel residents. Um, and the good point is, too, is, is they're really, they're just an advisory committee. So right. it's not like they have any weight, right. they can't do anything. Advise you, so it's not like conservation committee or, or the planning commission somebody who actually has the teeth to do something. And and the state allows non resident or non Bethel residents to be on the planning commission already. So I didn't see the harm in it, and, nope. and I certainly understand right now we're having a really hard time getting volunteers. So and I hope you guys all like the letter we 
kind of pass around the office, the insert, to outline, did, I did some research on the benefits of volunteering, trying to. <laughs> Well, we, we've, been talking. we've been talking about this for going on two years now, the slow dwindle of, yeah. of the committees and yeah. how it's going to really slow our progression we've had yeah. in this town. And nobody's, the last two uh, town meetings, nobody's stood up to want to do anything. No. And honestly, if Judy didn't come and Doug didn't come, you know. I mean, I am. I mean, we're not the only towns that have this issue because no. I talked to no, Brookfield no. and those ones, and they're in the same boat no. we are. No. But, you know, like, we do need to fill committees. I, I guess yeah. I am yeah. a little hesitant to put a non town person on a town committee yeah. just because of where, where like Mo was saying, where is their best interest served? Is, yeah. Are they really genuine interested in yeah, why, why Bethel, or are they well, trying to push an agenda they, from another area? The and, town that they reside in may not have an energy committee. Yeah. Right, and, yeah, true. Um, and, uh, and if they make up the you know, minority of the board. Again, we get the vote to put them on anyway. Yeah, right, yeah. So if you had yeah. somebody that. You, you know, know, I mean, I, you know, that's the thing. Because unfortunately, people aren't volunteering. So if you have two people interested, it, it behooves us. But really, that's, I don't, frankly, yeah. I, don't reside, I don't reside in Bethel. So it's really, There's I should be giving it a A lot of the energy now is multi -town. Well, I guess that was going to be a question I had was, you know, with some of these committees that every town is struggling with, is, yeah. is there anything to say that we could partner with a neighboring town to have a, you know, it could be the energy committee for oh, three towns, idea. or it could be the, sure. I mean, I don't know, I mean, could you have a planning commission that would be for two towns or three towns? That I mean, just, that I'm just trying to think of like, there's... I don't think you could for planning you know, because... Yeah. I think that would be tough, but I think energy, absolute conservation, um, recreation, sure, I think there's a lot of them that, yeah. that you could totally do that with this. Um, but, you know, again, she asked, I researched the LCT, I did ask Abby, and she looked into it, she's like, yeah, I don't, she, wasn't, she didn't see anything in statute, and so uh, Nicole had this, and Nicole talked to Jose, and mm -hmm. she basically gave me the motion for the resolution, so. So yes, if you're looking for something to do, the town of Bethel needs you to but volunteer. I, but I don't think at this point there's anything that you need from the board because there's nothing to say that they can't already. Well, we need, I need your right? permission. I mean, well, and then we approve how, them all on a case-by-case case basis anyways, don't we? I think you should have to interpret this because it says right here. I don't see anything that says it has to be town or non-town. Right. Yeah. It says the Bethel Energy Committee may nominate advisory So I guess yeah. what I'll tell her is go ahead and nominate your non-residents. It doesn't seem like the board's opposed to. She just didn't want to put everybody through their paces and get right. their hopes up if you guys were all going to say no. And I understand well, that. What, what does advisory non-voting members mean? Basically, because they're just advisory. I mean, if, we, if we, one of us got on the board, we couldn't vote on anything. We'd be non-voting members of the board. But what does advisory, I mean, why, what's that wording in there? Basically, the, the advi this is the motion that the prior yeah. select board made. I think advisory means, so basically what it's saying is the Bethel Energy Committee has no teeth. They can vote kind of amongst themselves to say, yes, we think we should send this to the select board, but it's, it's like a non-binding, it's non-binding. They give it to you and say, our recommend, our majority of the Or it could be, could be the Energy Committee partnered with a group you know, a business group or a, you know, thing like that. You know, it's yeah. kind of like, it's like when Jose it's kind of like planning is partnered with, uh, you said, know. He was asking if we would do it. Right. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah. I, I think the only thing I would suggest is if there is a non-resident that is interested in being on a committee, that not only should they write their, just like everybody has to write a, a, a letter, Expressing interest, but, interest, but maybe they yeah. should put a little bit of information in there on why they would like to in Bethel. Okay, you know? that makes sense. So maybe we understand that, okay, they're coming from Rochester and they don't have one in Rochester and they want to be a part of it. Right. Or they want to be on one, but it's full. Or, you know, I, don't, well, <laughs> I doubt that'll ever happen. But they you also know. need to stagger the terms. Yep. 
and then yeah. And then, you know, introduce the also, I'll tell her that too when she does that whole um, list. Well, usually, yeah, the terms are usually stuck. I, I would say that you know the energy committee. Maybe we should talk about that. Is maybe that should turn into some sort of more regional, not just a town. I mean, it it got off the ground sort of well, and but now it's kind of losing energy and. Well, I can ask um, her, no pun intended, I can ask her. So, <laughs> I saw our, their committees yeah. in other towns, maybe they could meet once in a while and do a joint. Or, I'll ask them They might get more out of it at this point to partner well, with a... I think Randolph has, a, has an energy, well, it might not be called an energy committee, but it's a committee that deals with those types of uh, topics. Yeah, does Royalton have anything like that? You know? mm -hmm. uh, can you meet uh, together? All right, I'll ask her. But. All right, so I'm going to tell her the non-resident should write a letter of interest just like anybody else and then just add why they want to serve in Bethel if they're not one in their town or Bethel, whatever. And I'll ask her, obviously, in her terms. So I will do that. Thank you for talking us through that. Yeah, I think this is just as clear as the interlocal agreement. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mel? <laughs> Crystal. Fair <Their> motion, yes. <laughs> Anything further on the Energy Committee membership discussion? Okay. Town Manager's Report. Anything that we didn't already go over? Um, let's see, I think I had mentioned that. So the Conservation Commission meeting is meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and if you mind inviting me, Steve Libby's going to be there, so hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about, you know, what's happening with ability with and when the conservation easements are coming to us, that sort of thing. So that's tomorrow night. Um, so tax bills, yeah, it's all day affair, as Judy knows. We probably printed tax bills today, and um, those are going to get mailed or get stuffed and hopefully mailed out tomorrow. We print all the inserts and we start folding them, but um, we had two pages of people, and part of it was because we were closed to the public in May, that overpaid their taxes. So you have to pull all two pages of those people's tax bill, handwrite on the overpayment. And oh. So you handle them a bunch of times. So those are gonna go out this week. Obviously we moved the, the tax to September 15th, but then the others are the same. So I realize it's a shorter distance between, you know, but it's, then it's gonna be November, February, so we're all go back on a regular schedule. So tax bills um, are going out. Um, uh, the reminder that the office is closed on Friday, August 14th. Uh, Pan is on vacation anyways. DT doesn't work Friday. Uh, Harmony Electric is upgrading our electric from a 60 amp to 100 amp service. Um, so obviously we can't be there. Um, I'll be working remotely, um, but Kelly is taking the day off. Um, and also ShredX is coming on Friday. We're going to be hauling out the basement on Wednesday and lugging all that stuff up to the garage, which is and cleaned out the little sheds and things out. So Shred X is coming Friday to pick up all the boxes and I'll shred them off site because since we finally passed that, um, we all passed that retention schedule, uh, we've been able to go down and Dietrich's gone through there and we'll do some more on Wednesday. Kelly's been helping there so we were able to hoe out. Um, they're gonna have to do a second round because we haven't even attempted to see what's upstairs in the attic. Getting there, and we've also scheduled our item schedule the um, maybe Kelly's schedule, I forget at this point, to clean the duct work. So that's getting cleaned out by Service Pro. And what else? Oh, and see if the oil will be adding another uh, fresh air return because our furnace isn't working quite breathing right enough. because of that. Huh? Yeah, it's not breathing it's enough. It's not, it's not getting enough mm -hmm. air, so it, sometimes you can smell fuel in the building. Mm. So that's happening. Um, so anyway, so we won't be there Friday, but you can certainly reach me on my cell. Um, okay. Other than that, I... A couple of, a couple of things, Trace. What's, um, do we have an update on the constable situation? Mm -hmm. Looking no. into alternative... Uh... I'm waiting to hear back from the state police. I received an email from Lieutenant Kessler and she kind of kicked it up the chain of command to see if they're 
how much it would be to contract and what we could get for hours. So I was waiting to hear back from her. I haven't. Um, so I'm waiting to hear from her, and I have not put in a call to the Windsor County um, Windsor County Sheriff's to see what they would do. But I'll make a note to do that. And I'll also make a note. I'll, I'll email this Lieutenant Kessler and see what she found out yet about um, contracting. And, uh, well, we get a fair amount of, we'll call it free service. Nothing's free. But you. we get, you know, unpaid service that they do. You know, quite often, especially at the fire station, there's always the yeah. cops sitting there or yeah. or just outside of town. So. Yeah. And we also moved the, we relocated one of the flashing signs from where the construction was to North Main. It was working at night. Richard has been great about trying, we're trying to figure out, I finally found a deal for the batteries. So we're trying to figure out if it was the batteries or actually the signs. And the last battery had to be working great. Mm -hmm. So now that board is on, that one's on last time you checked is only going off at night and it's like 750 bucks to repair the motherboard so I need to call WorkSafe and Barry to see if they have someone who comes down and repairs or if they can upgrade it because the signs themselves are like six grand yeah. well, so mm -hmm. um, but I asked someone at the state I asked Ryan Slack at the state I said hey you got someone who fixes these and he sent me to Dan Hotel and Dan's like those things are designed to fail mm -hmm. um, but we don't have the money budgeted to do it so I'm trying to but that's also too cheap to spend 750 on the motherboard without talking to somebody you about need, You need some like really smart um, electronic guru yeah. in town that can you know fix stuff. anything. Yeah. Do you know anybody yeah. like that? Somebody at BTC? I mean, you think it's oh, you'd be surprised. You know, you get to do no, that. I know. There's, there's always somebody that there's somebody in town at that, that yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so no, Paul, this is my, um, I emailed Lieutenant Kessler. I was waiting back for her. I, she CC'd somebody else who I assumed was further up the food chain. Um, but I haven't done anything about it yet. It's just. The escape park, <coughs> he's coming back in August? He's supposed to be back at the end of August. Yeah, if I don't see him by the end of the week, I'm going to call him. I have it on my calendar to give him a call. Because last time I spoke to him, um, he said he'd be back. And he certainly has not been rained out, so. I'm assuming his other projects are going along. And I did have somebody who forced concrete to come and check out this project, yeah. and they said it was great and it was excellent work. Yeah. So, because I had some questions um, and they were brought to me, and so I met with somebody there on the site. So that was reassuring. Cool. And last but not least, <laughs> the Peabody project seems to have come to a halt there. Uh, well, he was on vacation. Oh, okay. uh, Dylan was on vacation, uh, so he was which is fine. And um, then actually we, behind the scenes, it's not on hiatus because myself, John Ashley from uh, Du Bois and King, Chris Bump from the state, we all met on uh, IDF at the virtual teams meeting um, because there was some question about our funding. So what happened is there's a culvert in there in this mess that is just old and I didn't call it out in the project because it wasn't called out in the list of damages that was left for us for you know when Chris and I were doing this. So it's come up now. So when Du Bois and King dealt with the work and engineered it, they included the culvert in the scope of work, which makes sense because it's part of it. But if I can't prove that it was damaged, I actually have the photos and there's no debris on the road. So I think the outfall was damaged but not the pipe itself. So I think the town is gonna to end up eating the, the um, precast, what's the word, headlong? The precast for the culvert, plus the culvert itself. But we'd be foolish not to fix that now while it's all dug up, because if it fails and starts to crumble in you know, three years, we look like a bunch of idiots, because we already were there digging it out, and we already have to repair the outfall. I would just continue to push back on them because we did trust me. You know, I FEMA is like the insurance company; they want to reject it so many times before they finally we say, did. "Okay, we'll we pay did. for some and of it." We did. We're going back and forth. I keep. I keep, keep pushing. Boyson King. I'm glad they capped their price because he's been doing extra work. He sent them a whole bunch of stuff. He sent them pictures. We sent them photos. How is that any different with some of the other culverts that were, you know, maybe because 20 never, years old that should have been replaced that get blown out? How is that any different? Because we never good doctor, called. Though. Because yeah. we never called it out in the damage inventory. Yeah. And you and I, I keep pushing back on We have. 
And it might take you a while to get the money, but I bet you'll get it oh, or something. From your lips to God's ears, I've spent time, engineers <laughs> spent time, I've sent them photos, and we had the, yeah. the geologists sent them photos from the river. Go and, talk to Greg, he's right over in Fairhaven. Yeah, I'll go get it. Only an hour that. drive. I also pulled all the stuff from Irene and scanned that to try to prove that there was damage from a prior flood, which would give us mitigation money, and uh, that didn't work either. Mm -hmm. So trust me, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing all we can on our uh, end. I'm, I'm not sure. The netting that's up there is all pushed over. And yeah. Some, the netting. Somebody, yeah, the, they have that snow fence. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll text Dylan and ask him what's going on if you mind. But um, he was on vacation. They were there um, today. They were? Uh, yeah, I had the no, I 20 more, minutes just to walk by. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, because he was on vacation, which was yeah. fine. But no, behind the scenes, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff over there. Um, and I took pictures and sent them, and I've been over there on the site too. So, um, but yeah. So pretty soon, and I did uh, start my letter to Kim to um, extend the. Canelo Bridge, you know, to next year. I need to get an extension from FEMA, so I did start that letter for her. Or for Canelo Bridge, yeah. Because we're getting an extension on that project, obviously. And that was partly due to COVID, so she didn't have a problem with Okay. Anything else? Town manager report? That's it. We're good? Unless you have any more questions. All right, meeting minutes for the 27th. Paul? It's all right, Lisa, this is the first time. Right. I, I'm just going on the record, this is the first time in five years I've ever pointed something out. So. I'm going to tell you what, I, um, I, did, uh, I was on vacation. Just so the first quick, time. I did a quick, like, I got to put these out. So. Um, so the point uh, under the capital road plan discussion, the second bullet point. All right, hang on a so, yep. so when we were talking about Gilead, we were talking about uh, putting Gilead to gravel, and we didn't. At least I didn't have any discussions on paving it back. Oh, okay. I that was me. So if I you could just take you. out and paving when the town is eligible for paving grants for that one. Okay. So the only one we were talking about repaving would be if we took Christian Hill down yeah. to dirt that temporarily, and then if we got a paving grant, then we could pave that again yeah. in the time down the road. That was me. So, I that okay. Thing, I think I just had my that was it. I was sitting there going, huh, just leave it in, but then no, I didn't want some people to get confused. No, that, exactly. I'm glad that you said that. Um, so what that, do you got, Paul? Fire away, Paul. It's hard okay. to get it. At the bottom of that page, any other business necessary? After some discussion, uh, some discussion regarding transfer station and N negative okay. comments should be and yep. negative. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. I've got to run my comp time. That's right. Is there good. anything else developed along that, that line? What line? The situation with the transfer station? The they, have ladder. Meeting, they have a meeting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so a motion to approve the meeting minutes as amended. Who we'll move? Second. Other communications? So I think you have the DRB. Planning Commission. And what else you got here? Planning Commission. I made your note. I rescheduled. We had to reschedule for the 20th, and I put in a Zoom meeting, much to whatever. And uh, so that's the end of your official cancellation notice of the former fest. Obviously, there's updates on the water project. Oh, the water project. Good news. Getting a second crew starting tomorrow. A second crew for Tatro comes tomorrow. So, what does that mean? Will they be working on? Side road and main line? Are they all going to be on main line? Or well, these that? guys, this this group is going to drop back and do the connections that they have made from the bank and some of the water okay. connections. That's what they're going to drop back and do first. While these uh, the crew that's here now is going to finish on livery, 
this crew is going to drop back and do the connections to get everybody connected to the water line that we put in. And the reason we need that done is because of where the tank is. Once we charge this, if we ever have to shut off, moving up the road, this part of the project, this part of town will be fine. They'll be already on the line. So how will the traffic look? If, will they be in one package, or will they be multiple packages? I or? think right now they're still going to be one package because livery and where they are is pretty close. I think once these guys move over and start, if they're going to, if they're going to move next to go do the um, sampling station in mm -hmm. front of the school and GW, then there'd be another side package. Of but right now they're going to be under one. I am package. seeing as they're getting closer to in town. One of the challenges I've seen is is the shifting of traffic when it's moving through the yeah. work zone to get, you know, goes into the the one way, and then yeah. when they try to get back over and come in through the corner, there's and there's cars there, there. Yeah. Yeah. that's getting very tight. So yeah. I don't know if we may want to start looking at limiting the parking in town because of that. I'm not um, sure right now they have a third guy. I haven't had because like a trailer truck tries to move through there and it's so basically they should be stopping traffic further back to get the more either they gotta do it further back or they, they gotta limit now because park they're gonna have to now yeah. because they're gonna be back one guy's gonna, they're gonna get here and the other three back here draw that and, and they may want to talk about what their game plan is for when school goes back in because it will as I know it mm -hmm. will get very busy yeah. <laughs> um, and you'll have traffic backed up for a long time once school I can ask them once they um, we have another meeting well they need every meeting but we have another job meeting I, I, one good thing with the school from being on the Zoom meeting I was on last week is it's instead of everybody getting out at the school at three o'clock, it sounds like you know middle school will be available to be picked up just after noontime. Yeah. You know, so it seems like there's going to be some leeway where some kids might be moved at different times, but yeah. bus traffic-wise is all going to kind of run at the same time. But parents coming in and out might be a little easier. So. Sorry, well, I'm not sure because I don't know where they're going to be at that point. Because I don't know if they're going to, these guys are going to do this and then move on and do the sampling station on Pleasant Street, or if they're going to stay and start. Because that'll and, get busy. I don't know what how they're going to what their plan is for work right now. So, mm -hmm. my name is, I just want to let you know we are getting a second group. So that's we were hoping to get. You know, we're still hoping to get the project done. Uh, and then I didn't want to really. Like Gilead Bridge is going to be opened up to probably next week or something. It's coming quickly there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they got one more coat of pavement put one on it. Glass, they yeah. should open it. Great. So. Oh, and East Bethel Bridge is going to get paved next week. Oh, good. Yeah. So. Again, I would just recommend just making sure that is thoroughly clean. We're going over it. Um, Alan is going to go over it. Power washed. And Monday, they're going to power, power wash it. Clean it all up because then we're gonna have to give it a couple days to dry before they come in. So yeah, it's um, gotta be really clean if you want the pavement to come yeah. out. And I did tell them a bunch of tack, like we yeah, they get a heavy tack. Yeah. So they said fine. So I'll make sure that either myself or Alan, when the David are coming, one of us will go over. Yeah, but, some pretty deep holes there. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, and they um, they power washed it once and cleaned it, but they're gonna go back over and do it again. I told them to make sure he brought his chainsaw and they could cut back all the brush right there. And if he had ordered his cable rail system, get it done. That way everything will be trimmed, cable rail in, paved, yeah. we're done. And I haven't been over there in a little while. Did they clean up all the winter sand that was kind of yeah. before and after the bridge? It was uh, yeah. There's a lot of winter sand that and, and if you look at some of that comes all the way back from 14 all the way down the hill. Yeah. It just rolls yeah, from a long way. And, and it all like piled right in that three-way intersection. Yeah, they right had there. swept and cleaned it all up. So, but, um, so that'll be good to get that bridge. And then um, I did hear that I asked Chris Bump because I'd written a structures grant for Watershed Bridge. So I asked him to talk about paving grants and this and that. And he said he hadn't heard yet. He said that... They're V-Trans yep. budget got approved only at like 60%. So Chris Bump said he wasn't sure what's going to happen, if they're only going to be able to do partial awards. He doesn't know yet. I was on a I phone call with the state stuff. last week for their program. So right now, unless... For structures too or just... Everything. Anything. So right now, unless something major happens between now and then, they're, they're not going to let any grants out this year. 
However, next year they'll do what? This year's grants and next year's grants. So it could be a two for year. Uh, so anybody that was in line, or let's say they were supposed to get it this year but didn't get the money. So they're not even giving them out? No, not this year. No, they're holding them. They, they can't, they canceled a bunch of um, state projects too. Well, he thought they might do part of it. Because yeah. I heard they only approved the state's budget, highway budget, is 60% of what their budget was. Yeah, they're, they're just pushing it right now. All right, well, so. good to know. Because I'm going to apply for But it doesn't mean we're going to lose a year. It no, may get I'm caught not. up next year unless something major happens. So. All right, then I'll do another structures grant, can a paving grant. Okay, perfect. Of course, some of that is tied to what they had hoped was the next relief bill that's still all buggered up. So, um, so but I knows? thought there was going to be more air money, like infrastructure money. It's that. supposed to come in the next one, and that one's been <laughs> depends. Everybody's got a different version of it. It's not well, going because anywhere. We're so. about, you know, <laughs> yeah. So it'd be nice to. Did everybody sign those? That was just a draft, though. Oh, okay. Um, I, I won't go over any of it tonight, but can we get the um, can we put the transfer station on as an agenda item for next meeting to go over some of the you know if we can or no know. I'm serious I don't know I mean oh. that's the transfer station board and you approve people to that so I guess it's Take any action, right? That you no, I'd just like to have a discussion, discussion point on. Well, one, I'd like to go over the last three years of financials there. Yeah. Then, like what we've been talking about and some of the shortcomings there financially. Well, we'll have more information on Wednesday. Are right? you um, good with that, Mo? Should are you we? Okay, without putting least, the transfer station on as a discussion for the select board about we're the ones putting the bill, I guess. So. I think we're looking at more financially right now. Right. I just don't want us to get the same situation where. We're trying to control that more too. No, but I think right now, looking through the financials, that the town of Bethel shouldn't be on the hook to correct all the different exactly. everything that's going on there. And right now, we have been bailing that facility out. We're only basically and and the town of Royalton hasn't pitched in their half. So no. we need to talk about it as a board and decide if we need to meet well, with Royalton to say. But I think we should talk first. And well, well, let's see how the Wednesday goes. Right, because we might get into that on Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is going to make sure you <laughs> Got my old packet all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Mo has his coffee. I made this so. coffee. But I think, I mean, it, it really opened my eyes to it financially, anyways, just looking through it today. And, that, because um, I'm like, okay, who's making up for the shortcomings here? Oh, that's us. And that shouldn't be on us to make up for the shortcomings, so. So I don't, I guess you could have a, a discussion, a discussion only, but no. Yeah, we don't take action. action. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't think you'd be other things I passed, but oh. I just wasn't really sure if you could. Yeah. I guess if they're open or local, I can open an answer. No, we can have a discussion on anything we want. Well, um, as long as there's no demands and uh, right. trying to govern. No, I think we should have a discussion to talk about. And by then, the, you should have your minutes, right. so we'll be able to. Okay. Talk about that, and then see if we want to. The next step would be to meet with Royalton Board to discuss it. Or it would be to make it, wouldn't it? So. Would it be to meet with the Royalton Board, or wouldn't it? No. Financially. I think yeah. it would be. It would be the Bethel and Royalton Select Board meeting with the BRTS Board. Wouldn't it? Yes. Yes. That's Other, otherwise, well, well, they have to be in the loop. Oh, exactly. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They have to be in the loop. Yeah. Well, we may. What we may want to do is make this a agenda item for next time and invite the board members to be a part of the discussion. If you you'd have to. You have to invite all the uh, right. transfer station board too. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, let's see how the right. Wednesday meeting so goes because the good news is there is a select board member. Possibly two, I don't know. There's one for sure that would be present, and there may be a second on the phone or something, I don't know. So maybe we can see, let's see what they have to say too. I, I they coming with a check? I don't maybe. Oh. <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah. Um, the interlocal agreement off the top of my head, but I do know enough to know that the interlocal agreement says that the select board appoints them, and so it's the BRTS board who takes action, and then. <coughs> I know the BRT, I know the two towns are supposed to approve your budget, 
budgets. All, all, all the counties are, all the member counties. Oh, really? Oh, I thought yeah. it was just Bethel and no. Royalton Select Board. No, because all, all, our budget is sent to all towns. All seven towns or whatever. Oh, is all eight. Eight. I wasn't sure. Yep. So we'll see how Wednesday goes and then and then we can act. Uh, well, just again. What bothers, what bothers me is we've got eight member towns and only two towns covering the whole situation. They it, are, it is kind of funny. Yes, you would think is. that everybody would have one. Yeah. And then maybe Bethel and Wellington had two one or something. Yeah, well, it should be just everybody have one, and, and, and that would be the board. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, kind of what they did with the school. They kind of went. The school did that, right? They each. Each town has a member. Well, I, well. Yeah. Well, we need to talk about. I know that so. Addison County, that the, the county one, that's how it was. Bristol had one person. You had an alternate, but they could come, but they can't vote if the regular person was there. So they had one person for each, and. and but that's not the way it is. This was structured. It beginning. was not. No, it, was, no. it was just Bethel and Royalton. Yeah. These other member towns, what, would pay to be members? Yeah, of the, and we all pay the same the, fee. We pay the same alliance right. fee. Right. The, the alliance fees, fees are, are by your population. So that's X number of dollars per. Yeah. 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 So we, we did that. But they're, getting, they're basically getting taxed with no other inflation. Well, we're making right. the laws and they got to follow it. Whether they agree or not. No. Well, maybe well, they ought to take it over. Sure. So maybe they ought to take it over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Michelle would. I got a. <laughs> I got 120,000 reasons for that. Yeah, Casella would take it over. They yep. said they manage it. I talked to uh, Jen and I met with two people because we were we knew we, we obviously had a shortfall. Or, I think uh, they, you know, the only we reason. Had Recycling. So we called, I called Jim Tower, and it was Jim Tower and Al, I can't remember his last name, and, um, and we met down there a few weeks ago and just said, hey, you guys have been in this for a long time, what are we missing? And they walked around, they were great, and he said, you know, Trees, Cosella would manage this just like we do in Randolph, and I said, yeah, I figured you would. And, um, but, so we, we talked a little bit about that briefly, but, um, but they were certainly very helpful. Um, but I just think it's so easy. You generate it, and you pay to get rid of it. Whether it's recycling or trash, I think that's the answer. Well, it's, it's getting to a point where the, the single stream is, is a break even and or losing money. Mm -hmm. yes, and, and you wouldn't believe the trash that's in that now. Mm -hmm. You want to take the trash, they throw it in the single stream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. I saw that. I mean, we did the, I ran the numbers. Well, you also have the newest cost, which is the compost. That's I know. That's quickly costing money. That's not taking any so we in either. That. I mean, and that's going to be higher than recycling well, at the pace it's going. Well, what we did. If you look at it. We we estimate a little higher on that because we it's going to be like ten, which is already going to be up to ten containers, and so yeah. we did we ran the math there, but you know it's still it's, the gentleman did the math for gallon and process like. This is so another state mandate that was about for You know, that's it. I agree with that. So, um, but anyway, sorry. So I would put it on. I just, I wasn't trying to be smart, Alex. I just want to talk about because <laughs> I wasn't sure if you could how. No, we can do it. I'll just say the towns, The towns can talk about anything they want. Yeah. And we'll have a better idea after Wednesday's right, meeting. So, so and, um, but yeah. So Otherwise, I just we're going to be just like Rolf and sitting down there and well, it's going to be done this, or it's going to be done this way. It's going to be as long as we're talking about bullet points that come off of the interlocal agreement, the yeah. two towns can talk about any of that, which the financial yeah. piece would be one of those. Yeah. Yep. Now, if we're going to talk about the day-to-day -day operations there, right. that's going to go through the board. Right. And hopefully we'll make some ground with them on that. I mean, I think once they see the numbers, I mean, I took Chet's budgets, and I've updated them for all the years, and I actually have to say they've been getting stuff, so... Do they have copies of, of, of 
Chris, Chris is looking yeah, at. I gave Chris the information because it's they do. This is they right. do. I just prepared all this for them, okay. and so and they get financial just like you guys yeah. get the budget. Yeah. Well, I, they get the same thing every yeah. month, and I gave Chris a copy of what's their packet for Wednesday because he's going. Yeah, it's um, a little more simplified, but and I it's all the same information for them. Yeah, I, so they have uh, what they were looking for because there's some confusion. Did you notice in there, Chris, that that eight thousand dollar day we had? No. On the projects? Oh, uh, we, we had an $8,000 day down there. Oh, I'm not Did you get a copy of the bank statement? Yeah, I didn't really look yeah. for that. Yeah, but I gave them that so they realized that, yes, the money's going to the bank because they have one lady in particular. I don't mm -hmm. know what she thinks we're doing, but obviously goes to the bank. So I thought I would give her that. I weighed out the account numbers, but I thought. That's one thing that I do. You may head with because now you have at least, you're going to have a couple of people, it seems yeah. like, on the, the 30th. Of side of understanding. If that person's allowed to be there. If, uh, yeah. The only thing I don't like about the setup right now, and we can talk about it, but is the, the delay between because any cash goes directly to the bank, yeah. and then you don't know what that you don't know what that is in here until you get your bank statement. You know what I mean? And you know why I do that? So you got a period because of time where you have a lapse there. You're not going to know. Well, the re yes. But what we you know? do is when we go, what happens is I generate it. Bank statement has their budget status report. Jen takes her deposits and she hand writes in the amount. The reason we do that is because in the, since I came to Bethel and it's gotten better recently, mm -hmm. but the deposits were wrong repeatedly. Wrong. Oh, I know. A buck here, eighty cents there. So every time I made an entry accounting for, I had to go make a correction. I finally mm -hmm. said, I'm done. I will do it when I do it. And now the entry does it when she does the bank statement yeah. because I got sick of it. I'm like, forget it. I'll do it one and done now because if right. I do it, post it on a weekly basis or whatever. And Chet would send them to me sometimes before the month closed. I didn't turn them. The bank statement would come and I'd have to make corrections. I finally said, forget it. We could do that before I generate them, but. Well, I mean, I, I think it has its pros and cons because it we, does. we did have an issue for a while there, and we're not saying that people yeah. were stealing money, but there was often, yeah. at least once a year, that a deposit came up missing or yeah. somehow, okay. and you know, it, it was touching too many different people's hands. Mm -hmm. So and I, now it doesn't. Now just going directly, it's good. We just get the information yeah. deleted. You know? Yeah, we, we could so. get copies of the deposit slips, but you know, Jen's busy. You don't need her dropping it off every day or whatever. But so yes, we could make it better. But honestly, I was sick of it. I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. I know your money's there. It's going right to the bank. But I was sick of making corrections because by the time you're paying me my hourly rate to make 80 cent corrections, it's a little bit ridiculous. So, but that's why Jen can't write the number. But apparently, that's got someone in a panic. So <laughs> that's why I wrote my explanation. But uh, yeah, so we could do something different. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Whether I stay for the whole meeting or not. I know. Any further business to come before the board? I move we I'll second. All right. Uh, I'll